Hello YouTubers. I promise that a, uh, a green box with product of Dynascan and the Cobra Snake is not the only thing you're going to see in this video. But, but I, I got a few things to say. You know, I've been away for a while. You know, it's been over a couple months since I made a video. And, uh, you know, I got some, got, got some shout outs to do and some thanks to say here real quick uh, before I get to the radio that this, this box is related to. Um, I think it's, uh, and I'll have to apologize, I apologize if I get the numbers wrong, I think it's 775 in the Keystone. Um, I run, uh, I tend to run channel 13, you know, AM side for, for local talk. We got a pretty good local group with a lot of people. And back some months ago, we were getting conditions pretty frequently out of the uh, Northeast and 775, like I said, I hope I got those numbers right. I'm really going to feel bad if I did, I got it wrong. But, uh, you know, he, he he made contact with me a couple times at night when I was talking, you know, talking to our, talking to my friends, you know, around here locally. Uh, you know, he recognized my voice from YouTube, uh, you know, just kind of, kind of shocked me somebody had actually recognized me. I've been told my voice is unique, but you know, I'm just, you know, kind of surprised to, to bump into somebody on the air that, you know, actually has watched my videos. And, you know, he's in the, he's in the classic radios too. He told me out there they have a, uh. I guess a classic radio roundup on I think it's 13 a.m. and I forget what what day and you know he said that was it might be on Wednesday nights or something I have to look I, I remember him saying there is information about it on the web so I think uh, you know a lot of other operators that do YouTube you know check in on that every now and then something something I ought to start trying to do when we got conditions because uh, you know Lord knows I got lots of classic radios um big thank you to a big thank you to everybody you know this is a 100 video I honestly uh, never had you know I never dreamed I'd do a hundred videos I honestly I never dreamed I'd even do 50 videos and I, I never thought there would really be that much popularity I figured by this time I might have you know 15 20 videos or something I mean, I mean don't get me wrong I know I'm not you know, my channel's far from immensely popular or anything, but it, it, it there's, you know, a lot, lot, there's been a lot more interest in it than I ever thought there would be, and I, I really appreciate that, you know, there's, I've made a lot of good friends on YouTube, you know, via this hobby, and, and, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate people's interest, and, and I don't mind, you know, and I don't mind, uh, uh, critiques every now and then, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of comments about my voice, you know, I've been told I sound like Tom Bodette on Model, Motel 6, you know, commercials from some years back, and, uh, uh, let's see what else, I sound like a robot, so I guess not everybody's, like, you know, ecstatic about my voice, but I'm sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a radio or TV personality, I'm not polished, uh, uh, I talk too fast, I talk monotone, and, um, uh, yeah, I tend to run everything together, but, you know, <laughs> I am who I am, you know, not much I can really do about that. Um, I think that's it for the shout-outs for right now. I, I've got, uh, I've got radio videos gonna be coming up, you know, I got, like I said, I got a lot of stuff to show, uh, you know, I got other people to thank for specific radios, uh, you know, I had a really... A rare radio come to me from a fellow YouTuber. You know, it, it came out of his, uh, uh, it was his, well, basically his father's estate, but the radio belonged to his grandfather too, and I really appreciate him, you know, contacting me and entrusting me with uh, being the next uh, caretaker of it. And uh, I'll be showing that radio sometime here in the near future. Uh, a lot of local friends have, have, uh, you know, various various means. Some have been given to me. Some, you know, some trade just bought outright. But you know, a lot of cool radios have come to me. You know, lately through local friends as well. So, you know, I, I got a lot of people to think about a lot of things. You know, in upcoming videos. First one, this is a birthday gift. Uh, my birthday was back in August, and uh, this came from a local friend. You know, goes by Crumb Picker on the radio. And he got this from a. Uh, he lives in Indiana. I live in Illinois. He lives on the other side of the river. He got this from a local that's a technician that repairs radios. But he's a collector too, big time, but much bigger collector than me. Um, this is a Cobra 139 XLR. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on the radio, other than I will show inside inside chassis. Uh, this is a real early version. It's had none of the updates done to it. If you go to CB Tricks. 
and look under the Cobra 139 XLR and you can probably look under the 138 XLR which is the mobile version. Um, there, there were a lot of updates that had to be done to these Uniden 858 radios, uh, especially like the 139 was an early, was an early, you know, early production, you know, Uniden 858. And the box, it, it's not original to the radio because the production number on the box is not the same production number on the back of the radio. The one on the back of the radio I'll show in a minute shows it's, it's a very early production. So if you look, if you look on uh, CB Tricks, you'll see there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of updates, and this radio hasn't had any. The only thing it's ever done to it was uh, the main filter and the DC power supply was replaced. And no, no, the radio's not in here. All I all I got was uh, I got the box. There's a microphone in here. Uh, the manual, which is kind of in rough shape. I've seen this manual many times. Uh, you know. They had this printed up for the 138 XLR mobile and 139 both. Uh, of course, that's a little fold-out schematic and bill of materials. Not going to go through the manual. There's not really, not really anything in there to see. You know, it's as mentioned. It's a, it is a UPD858 PLL radio, 40 channel sideband. I'll show you the radio in a minute. That's just the microphone. Yeah, I've got a little bit of the packaging materials too for one of these. Okay, let's take a look at the radio. I'm, I'm sure you've seen enough of the box and heard me talk long enough, Lord knows. Well, sadly, I don't have much to show as far as uh, traffic because uh, it's all south of the border and it, honestly, it's fading out. Or it seems to be right at the moment. And here it is. This is not new. This is not mad. I have not detail cleaned this radio. I, I just gave it a, a really, really quick cleanup, and that was it. Oops, getting a little... Yeah, I turned my light off on the camera accidentally. Um, you know, these look a lot like the later 142 GTL, but this is the predecessor, because this is an 858 PLL radio. Uh, pretty deluxe. You know, Cobra used this particular chassis for for quite a number of years because, like I said, the 142 GTL looks pretty fairly similar, but not identical. Um, need some more cleaning. I got some. I don't know what that is. It flakes off with the fingernail, <laughs> a little fingernail scraping, and the and the finish looks great underneath. I was to get the dust out of the speaker drill and, you know, the knobs. I didn't take them off and clean because this radio is pretty clean. And I just gave it a quickie wipe down. It's in pretty good shape. Everything works on, on this guy. The stock, like I said, as far as I remember, and we'll look here in a minute at the inside. I think the main power supply filter for the DC power supply is the only thing that's ever been changed. So there just ain't much on there right now. was a little bit of side man but I just switched over a little slow 38 lower side I don't know why that channel selector looks dim in the camera That's an Australian station. I didn't catch his world radio numbers. So there is a there is a little bit of DA, maybe it's shifting. Um, controls, about the same as on any radio, not really much to show. Clarifier's not been open. Uh, transmit wise, she's stock. It does just barely over 10 watts on AM and around, oh, I don't know, about 12 to 14 on single sideband. They're fading in and out. There's so much fade, I can't, I really can't get the clarifier, you know, just right for them. That's the speaker in the radio. Um, I've probably seen enough of that. I mean, ain't really much to show. A little bit of video of the back of it to show the, the really low production number. Uh, I think all these had a 7 in front, but 632. So if you go CB tricks and look under the Cobra 139 XLR or the uh, 138 XLR, you'll see this is a 
very very early production in other words all all the service bulletins apply to this guy because it was so early uh, this is when uh, Uniden was making the radios in Japan you know that's just basic stuff on the back nothing spectacular to see uh, like I figured out what the gunk is on it that's a styrofoam residue like I said this came from a collector um, you know, my, my friend got it from a collector that he knows, and uh, obviously it's been in that box in the styrofoam for quite a while. Production number here does not match what's on the box, but that's okay. I mean, I'm, it's not a big deal to me. It's got the rubber bumper guards here on the back. As you can see, it's, I mean, it's pretty nice. She ain't meant, but, you know, it's definitely, uh, definitely good shape. A lot better than, a lot better than a lot of them out there anymore. These, these radios were, of course, heavily modified and heavily used. They've got a lot of years on them. They're from the late 70s. Well, there she is on all of her infinite glory. The, uh, pretty famous, uh, you know, A58 chassis. Uh, as mentioned, power supply filter. It's definitely been replaced. Got a niche on cap in it. You know, it's fairly recent. Um, as you can see here, it's not been tuned up. I don't think wax is still in all the all the carbon slugged inductors. So I don't think she's been messed with. Now. You know, there's some things I'm going to have to debate about, you know, because this, this guy hasn't had any of the updates, and, you know, these had some some problems in the early design like this. Uh, you know, one one of those is, yeah, you're probably wondering, what in the, what in the hell is that? Well, <laughs> uh, that's my non-permanent solution to one of the, the updates. This radio's problem was, see all these uh, main uh, mixing crystals here? There's a regulator underneath this conglomeration I bolted. See, there's a little little metal chassis cabinet for the PLL section that goes around here. And these, these metal sides, see, they solder together. And they solder through, if I remember right, they solder through the bottom of the board, you know, via tabs. I think you can see where one of these tabs is going through the board right there and on the bottom side. Of course, it's, you know, soldered to the, to the main board. Well, thankfully, they put holes in it, and it just so happened, I, I didn't drill anything. None of this is permanent. I just bolted, these are heat sinks out of old junk radios, and I just bolted these on here because that regulator puts off an extreme amount of heat, and it was heating these crystals up. So there's more mixing crystals on the back side. I mean, she was drifting, she was drifting pretty bad on AM and sideband both due to the heat. The hotter it got, the more it was going off frequency, and after I did this, it really stabilized the radio. Um... One of the service bulletins on CB Tricks talks about a retrofit kit. I don't know what that looks like. I mean, I've seen the insides of a lot of 858 unit and radios in the past, but I just don't remember what kind of heat sink setup they did after, because they moved the uh, regulator off this metal, this metal strip. And I'm assuming they probably, I don't know, drilled the chassis maybe and had a large one like where the audio chip and this regulator is sitting back here in the back. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do. I have to do some looking online sometime and, and try to see what they did. I just stacked a whole bunch of these <laughs> together, rather ugly. Uh, bolted it here by the regulator, and then uh, over here for a little extra heat dissipation, I took another one out of an Ojunk radio, and it just so happened it had holes that were perfectly lined up for these two existing holes, and this was an existing hole. I said I didn't drill anything. Um, now well, there you have it. There ain't really much else to see. You know, looks like it's even got the original bulbs, and the bulbs actually work. Uh, this radio probably was not used a whole lot. I mean, it's pretty clean inside. I think it's been stored more than it's ever been used. So, there you have it. The Cobra 139XLR. Uh, one of the many, many uh, unit in... Uh, 858 PLL radios that were made. The chassis was kind of short-lived. It's 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 a little bit, you know, a bit more complex than the later MB8719 chassis. Really like these though. A lot of people do. They're they're excellent sideband performers and really they do a good job on AM as well. But they uh, they definitely do shine on single sideband. So uh, 73s everybody. You know this really ended up as usual being a lot longer than I wanted it to be. Kind of wanted to be a little shorter, but I had some had some things to say at the beginning, and 
you know, and it takes some time to, you know, show the basics of the outside and then, you know, show some of the insides. So, uh, until next time, like I said, I got a lot of, lot of, lot of radio, you know, CB radio videos. I got some amplifiers to show, um, got a number of shortwave receivers to show too. Um, uh, shortwave receivers that are a lot different from what I've, uh, you know, owned and shown in the past. So, 73s, everybody, I, thanks for the support, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of a big deal to me in a way for a hundred videos and, you know, I surpassed 50,000 views a long time ago, and that was, I mean, I, this is way beyond my wildest, you know, I really didn't have any wild expectations, ex expectations for, uh, for my YouTube channel, I didn't think it was, uh, you know, I just never really dreamed I would really be doing that much with it, so, you know, I appreciate the interest and the support, and, uh, questions, comments, suggestions, always welcome, so, 73's everybody, take care.